Okay, this is Photoshop. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to open up an image. So this is an image I found on Google. It is not public domain, but it'll work fine for this project. When you first open up Photoshop, I know it can seem a bit overwhelming. The interface, there's just a lot going on. Don't worry, we're gonna try to make some sense of this so you have a better understanding and a better grasp on how to use Photoshop. The main thing to understand with Photoshop, everything is grouped into panels. So you can see here's one panel, here's another panel, and then if you click on this tab, you can see another panel, go back, and so you can just see, and then if you double click on these tabs, that'll open and close the panels. And that's just the way to navigate. And you have these little carrots here, you can use this to collapse each panel to grow or collapse. And so close it, there we go. And you can see here, grow and collapse. So that's the first thing to understand with panels. That's kind of Photoshop, how the interface is laid out. Now, if you go up to the top and click on window, and then mouse over workspace, make sure that you have essentials click. So what this does is this gives you all the panels set up for just the essentials. And then they have different panels arrangements depending on what type of project you're working on. I primarily use just the essentials. So this bottom section right here, this is your layers panels. So when working with Photoshop, most projects have multiple layers and this will make sense in a second. This is your main layer. When you open up an image, you'll see this little lock icon here. Okay, that means that this layer is locked. You can't do anything with it, but if you double click on it, and then we're gonna name this layer, King Charles Cavalier, click OK. Now we can make an edit to this layer because the lock disappeared. And every layer, what's really nice about Photoshop, has a little thumbnail so you can kind of see what's in that layer. Now this little icon here, this eye, that can hide and show the layer. So if I hide this layer, you'll see there's like little checkered pattern here. That just means that this is a transparent background. So there's nothing here. So we're going to show this. And then down here are different options you have for this layer. So I can delete it. I can create a new layer on top of it. I can group layers in folders. Here you can create an adjustment layer and we'll go through this later add a layer mask and then effects. But the main thing to understand is that here's where all your layers are. Now if I click here, I can create a new layer. I'm going to undo this, click edit, undo new layer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this layer over create new layer and that creates a copy of it. If you double click on the name, I'm going to rename this to new King Charles Cavalier. And that is my second layer. So this will make more sense in a second. Let's go on and scroll our mouse all the way towards the right and the bottom. Let's start here. This controls your zoom on the canvas. And so if I click this to 50%, it's going to zoom out. And you see the dog got smaller. If I do 300, it'll zoom in. And then next to it right here, you can get some nice document information. So you right click on this little carrot here, actually if you just click on it, you have different options on what you wanna see. I like to select document dimensions because that's most important to me. Now I know that this image is 900 by 600 pixels, 72 GPI, we don't need to worry about that and I'll explain more in the next video, but for now just know that this image is 900 by 600 pixels. It's a little bit small for Merch, so with Merch they want 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. This is a little bit smaller. You might get away with scaling it up, but I wouldn't recommend it. But just be aware that down here, select document dimensions and you can see the size of the document you're working on. Okay, so now let's move over to the left section. This is the toolbar. See, there's like a lot of icons here. Every icon here is actually a set of tools. So if I right click on here, it'll pull up a collection of tools for this particular set. And then clicking on each tool set up here, you have the options panel. So if I click on different tool sets, you'll see that it changes. And these are options that pertain to this particular tool set right here. Now the first tool we want to click on is this one at the top. This is your move tool. 
and you can access this by clicking V. So actually if you mouse over this you'll see a little tooltip really helpful and then also it'll tell you the little shortcut so you hit V. Now what this does this will move your image around so you can see I can move this layer and then I can see the bottom layer underneath it because these are stacked on top of each other right here. So we're going to let's move them back in the center and that's your move tool. Now underneath the move tool is your selection tool. Now this you can have a rectangle, a circle, a single row or a column. I'll show you what a selection is. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I'm just going to click a point and drag it. So click and drag and let's say right here. Okay. Now you see these trailing ants? This marquee? Okay. This is a selection. Anything in here I can edit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to edit right here. I'm going to copy and I'm going to create a new layer. We're going over to the layers panel, new layer and go back to edit and I'm going to paste in place right here. Now I'm going to hide these two layers by clicking on the little eye icon and here you can see my copied selection. So we'll select that again and I'm going to delete this and I can do the same thing with the elliptical tool. Just click and drag. Now if I hold shift it'll make a perfect circle. So if I don't hold shift then I can kind of have this warp ellipse. Shift makes the perfect circle and I can copy the same thing. Now if you go to select and click deselect or command D on a Mac that will remove your selection. So just know that this tool set is primarily for making selections and then underneath it this is also make selections but in a different way. So this is your lasso tool and what this does is you can just draw your selection into any shape you want. And if you're pretty good at drawing at this point you can probably crop out the dog and just trace the outline of him like that. And so I'm going to deselect command D to deselect and then underneath that is your polygon lasso tool. Now I use this one a lot. It's a great and quick way to crop out a section of an image. What this does is this creates just a collection of lines and what you do is you just click and point, click and point and then you connect it all together and that's your shape that you've selected. And then underneath this is the magnetic tool. Now this tries to look for large contrast on an image to predict what is it you want to crop out. It's a little buggy, it doesn't work too well and you gotta be pretty sturdy with the hand so I don't use this too much but just so you know that's what the tool does. Now underneath this tool set is the quick selection tool and I use this all the time. This is a pretty cool tool. So what I can do with this tool is I can select the dog and what it does is it looks for, again it just looks for large contrast in an image and it tries to predict what is it you want to select. So here you can see it's done a pretty good job with the dog and I hit V going back to the move tool and then I'm going to go to edit copy. I'm going to create a new layer and we are going to paste in place like that. Now if I hide these two layers you can see there is my dog. Pretty cool. So I'm going to call this puppy face and I'm going to show that again. All right so it's really cool the quick selection tool. It works when there's a lot of contrast. You can run into issues. There are more advanced ways to fine tune your selection, but just for now, this is the quick selection tool. Now underneath the quick selection tool, you have the crop tool. So if you hit C, that would access this. I use this one quite a lot as well. Now I got this image on Google and let's see, I'm going to zoom in to 200 right here. And you see, this is a next day pets image. And I'm like, oh, next day pets. Yeah, I don't really like this here. So what I can do is I can select the crop tool and then I can move this little selection here. And I'm just going to move it just out there, hit return. And now that's cropped the image. I no longer have to see that anymore. Now, do note that when you crop an image, you do make the whole image and the canvas smaller. So if you look back here in your document size, this used to be 900. Now it's only 600 pixels wide. So I just made the image a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to undo this because I want to keep the full size. And then I'm going to zoom back to 100. 
right here. Okay, click there. So that is the crop tool. Now, underneath this is the eyedropper tool. Now what this does is, this will select a color. So I can click on the dog, so I'm gonna click on his eyebrow there, and that selects brown. Now, we go all the way down here. These are your main colors. So this is your foreground color and your background color. So with the eyedropper, I can select the doggy's eyebrow and I see that I've selected brown. Now suppose I selected this cloth here. You can see it's kind of a turquoise color. I can select the basket, brown again, select this part, you get kind of orange. So, and then what you can do, just to show you with the selection tool, I can go back to my rectangle tool and I can make a rectangle here like that. I can go to edit, fill, and I'm going to make sure that I have foreground color because this is the foreground color. Click OK and that just turned my selection into the color of my foreground. So I'm going to undo this, undo fill, and then click command D and that's how you would use the eyedropper tool. Pretty handy tool. Okay, this next one is your spot healing brush. Now, this is what you would use to get rid of a pimple. Suppose you have a picture of yourself and you have like a pimple that you want to remove. This is probably would be the way to do it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on the puppy. Let's do 300 this time. And you see this little orange bit around him. He's kind of got this little orange bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the spot healing brush and I'm just going to slowly draw over it. Okay, and I'm going to draw over this bit, like that, and this bit. So what this does is, this it looks for the surrounding colors, and it tries to remove anything that stands out so that it matches more of the surrounding colors. So if I hide this image, you can see that it's removed some of the, the discoloring on the dog. Now, this looks a little fake. If you zoom in really closely, you can see it kind of looks a little blotchy. So I don't use this too much, but it is there and it's kind of handy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to undo that and just keep the puppy the way he is because he looks cute the way he is. Okay. And that is the spot healing tool. And down here is a few more tools. This would get rid of red eye. This, the patch and the healing brush. I actually don't use these tools. Just know the spot healing tool is what you're primarily going to use to get rid of really small blemishes. Now underneath here, this tool set contains your brush tool and your pencil tool. The brush tool is probably the one you're gonna use the most. So if I select this and then I click up here, you can see that I have a collection of brushes. Now this brush here, see how it kind of glows? That means the end of the brush kind of feathers out. So this one right here is just a solid circle. So this one, it kind of feathers out and you can control how much it feathers out by the hardness. So if it's at 100, it's gonna be a big block. If it's at zero, it's gonna be feather. And then here you can control the size of it. And I actually use a hotkey. So next to the P key, you have your open and closed brackets. You can actually use that to increase or decrease the size. And that works for all the other tools too. So this is the brush tool. So what we'll do is we'll create a new layer and we'll call it brush tool example. So the brush tool, I'm selecting that layer. I have the brush tool selected and I have this color selected. Actually, I kind of like this color. So I am going to click this little icon to reverse it and this is blue. Now what I can do, I'm going to zoom out 100 and I am going to click on this one right here and I'm gonna just brush the background. And what I can do here, I am using my brush tool and I'm going to turn the background into this blue color. And you can see like that. And I'm just going to go over everything. Oh no, I'm going over the dog. It's okay. I'm increasing this by using the, the bracket keys next to the P key. And I'm just going to do that for a second. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this layer underneath the dog. And there you go. Now I kind of changed the color of the background. Kind of cool. So let's go on and delete this. And that's the brush tool. With the brush tool, as drawing on here, you can change the opacity of the brush tool to show how much of it you want to show. And then this is 
the flow. So think of it like a spray can with low flow. When you start brushing, it's really subtle. High flow, it's going to be really instant. And then the opacity is how invisible do you want the brush to be? So if I just did kind of like a little bit, it's just going to slightly and gradually turn everything blue. Or if I have it at a hundred percent, it's just going to completely change everything blue. Okay. Gonna hit V go back and that's the brush tool. Underneath this is the pencil tool. Now the pencil tool, what this does is this just kind of works like a pen and that there is no soft or feathering. It's just a really hard brush. So like that. Also, if you zoom in all the way, this goes all the way down to a single pixel, which is really handy in some cases. So that is the brush tool and the pen tool, the color replacement tool and the mixer brush tool. I don't use these hardly ever. So these are the tools I use the most. Okay. Now underneath here is the clone stamp tool. This is fun. So I'm going to hit this zoom icon and zoom in here. And with the clone stamp tool, actually, let's go back to a hundred. So with the clone stamp tool, the way this works is you hold down the option or alt key, select an area. I'm going to select the eye there. I click and then I let go. And now what I can do, I can make a clone of this particular section that I copied and paste it other place in the image. So now this cute dog that you see here, I'm just going to keep copying it is now going to turn into the 20 eyed monster. So you can see here, I am putting eyes all over the screen like that. And I just, I hit option or alt click the eye and then I choose a random location and just paste it. And that's what the clone stamp tool does. So let's undo all this. Okay. Hit V back to the move tool and underneath the clone stamp tool is the pattern tool. So this is really cool. Now up at the top under your options panel, you have different patterns. Now you can import one by clicking on this little gear uh, icon, new pattern. You can create new patterns or you can import patterns. I'm just going to select a pattern I have here and I'm going to select the dots. And what this does is you can paint in your pattern onto the canvas. How cool is that? Yes. So there you go. And that is the pattern tool. So let me undo that. Now underneath this is the art history and brush tool. I actually don't use these, so I'm just going to skip those. It's not really vital to what we're doing here. And this is your eraser tool. And you can imagine what this does is that it just deletes and removes what's on this layer. And so what's cool about this tool, if you ever, you see like a circle here, look at the top and it's actually just another variation of a brush. So you can actually use different brush tools. Like for example, I'm going to select this brush right here and I'm going to increase the size of this. And you can see, I can just start erasing things, but now I'm using a different brush. So it gives me a different effect, which is kind of cool. You can see like that. Okay. Hit V. So that is the eraser tool. Now underneath this, we have the gradient tool. Now what this does is you scroll up to the top and you have gradients that you can select. So the very first one is going to use your foreground and your background color. That's why you have two. So you can set your gradient. So I'm going to click on that. And then what I can do is I can click on a point and drag it and that'll create a gradient, which is pretty cool. Now, the only thing I would say when uploading shirts to merch is that merch are kind of weird about gradients. You can get away with them. But be aware that when they start to blend, sometimes it doesn't come out too well. So just be aware that some people recommend not to use them. Other people say if you do use them, make sure there's a lot of contrast. So just be aware that you might want to avoid gradients on a merch shirt. Not a rule of thumb, but just something to be aware of. Okay. Underneath the gradient tool, you have the paint bucket tool. What this does is this looks for similar colors 
and then lets you modify it. So if I start clicking around here, it's finding similar colors and it's letting me paint. So that's a quick way to kind of fill. I don't use this tool ever. Um, I never really have a need for this. So that is the paint tool. And then I don't use the 3D material <laughs> drop tool. Okay, underneath here you have the blur tool. This is pretty cool and I use this quite a bit. So I have this layer selected and what I'm going to do is just select everything. As you can see, what it does is anything you paint over, it makes it blurry. And that's what the blur tool does. And actually, if I keep going over this, you won't even be able to read Next Day Pets right here. So this is really cool because you can use this to create depth in your image. So what I did was I completely blurred out this layer. We have our puppy face on the top. So if I hide the puppy's face, you'll see that it's really blurry. And that's what the blur tool does. Pretty cool, handy. And the nice thing about it is you can draw more emphasis to the puppy, which is really cool. And that is the blur tool. Now underneath that is the sharpen tool. And I'm going to zoom in. So I hit Z to zoom in, just so you know. And then I'm gonna go back to our sharpen tool. And what this does is I'm gonna click the puppy's face and I'm just gonna kind of draw over them. So what this does is it's the opposite of blur in that it adds kind of a type of contrast to make the puppy stand out more. So this is really good for making textures and sharpening certain parts of an image. So like for example, here I can just kind of, I'm just sharpening this part of the image right here because it seems a little blurry. And what this does is you can see it gives it a lot more texture and it pops out more. So if I hide it, it's kind of blurry. There it pops out more. And it kind of gives you more emphasis in this area right there. So the puppy, he kind of looks like he's looking more at an angle. It's a little effect you can have with that. And that's the sharpen tool. This is the smudge tool. It just makes everything kind of blurry and just smudges everything around. <laughs> so that's it. Okay, so blur, sharpen, smudge. Now underneath here, you have the dodge tool. What the dodge tool does, it actually makes everything lighter. So it just it removes all the dark colors. So what I'm doing is I'm going over the white part of the dog, the white fur part of the dog, and making it brighter. So this is kind of cool. And now I'm making his whites really stand out more, as you can see. And then underneath the dodge tool, let's see, let's go back is the burn tool. Now with this is the opposite. This will make everything darker. So I'm gonna go over to his blacks hair and I'm just gonna go over it with the dodge tool. What this is doing is making his blacks blacker. So you can see now there's more contrast. But what I don't like is that it also removed the light. So you see how there's like the reflection here? So this burned it and it kind of killed the reflection. And so it has it, it It makes it make the image look fake. And so one of the things people do is they try to make subtle changes to an image so it doesn't look like it was Photoshop, if you're going with images. And then underneath here is the sponge tool. Now this tool is kind of cool. What this does is you scroll at the top and this can desaturate or saturate your image. So desaturate, what that does, that'll turn your image black and white. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select this back layer right here, hit desaturate, and I'm just gonna draw over the entire image here. And as you can see what I'm doing is, I'm slowly removing the color from the image and making it look dull and further away. And now the puppy is more vibrant and he stands out a lot more. So you can see it's a really subtle way and it's a nice effect to draw more attention to the main element of your image. So, and then we're gonna undo that. And then the opposite, you can actually saturate right here and we're gonna do the opposite and just make the background a lot more colorful and vibrant. This kind of makes the whole image stand out more. And But if you do it too much, you kind of see these like yellow stains here. That's where you kind of blow out the image. So try not to do it too much, unless that's the effect you want but just be aware that 
when you try to saturate an image, you're making the colors more vibrant that you can kind of damage the photo doing it that way. Okay, underneath here, so these tools right here, these bottom four tools are what I call your vector tools. And so this will make sense in a minute. I'm gonna start with the bottom one and I'm gonna select a rectangle. So what I did was I right click and select rectangle. This is your shape tool. And what you can do here, you can draw a shape. So this allows you to draw shapes. And here's my layer. And you see this little icon here? That means it's a vector layer. So now we just drew a rectangle. I can use this tool, which is the path selection tool. And what that'll do is that will let me know all the paths that are in the shape. So I'm going to select this and then what I can do is I can move these paths around and manipulate the shape. So that is the shape tool. Now this, these tools right here, Adobe has another program called Illustrator and this has more refinement of these four tools. So Illustrator is what you use to create vector objects and manipulate it. Photoshop does allow some vector manipulation, but ultimately it, everything comes out as pixels. So hopefully that'll make sense later on as we go through the course. But no, this is the pen tool. And here you just click and drag. And here you can get really precise shapes. And so I actually use this sometimes to crop out images. And if I collect here, and I hit the command or option. It might be control if you're on PC. And then what I can do is this path that I just created, I can turn that into a selection. And then we know at fit point I can copy it or color it. Uh, so I have this selected. I can go to the brush tool and then I can just brush in that selection right there. So it's kind of cool. That is the pen tool. And then underneath here is your text tool. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna type hello. Now it's really small, and so what I can do is that I can hit this little icon here. I can change the font. So I want nuclear accident, for example, or a love of thunder, but I'm gonna go to this one, my default one, and here I'm gonna change the size of the font. So C72, okay, that works. This right here, if I had multiple lines, this controls the line height between each line. And then this right here controls what's called the kerning. And so the spacing in between the letters. So if I do negative 100, it squishes everything together. Or if I do 200, it makes everything further apart. So that's really handy. And I use this a lot when creating designs. So, and then down here, you can make everything all caps or have an underline and just a few more options regarding the topography. Of your text layer. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hit edit free transform and just command T. It might be control T if you're on Windows. So I hit command T right here. You can see this and I can select this corner and drag it. And here you can see I can change the size of the text just like that. And I'm going to hit return. Now, if I double click on this text, it'll highlight it. And then I have also options here. So I can edit my options text here, or I can just use this top tool. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna make it white. So I just drag this all the way down. It's white. Okay, that's cool. And I'm gonna change it so it says, fix, pet me. Cause that's what the puppy's eyes look like they're telling me. And I can hit, V for the move tool and I can move this around and I'm going to do I'm going to fill in the space like that hit command T and I'm gonna let's see about that cool now what I did was this text layer is underneath the head the puppy face layer and the text is actually behind the puppy now if I put this on top you'll see that the text is on front but I kind of like it in the back because it makes it look, look like the text belongs in the image. Kind of unifies the design. You have a little bit of depth and also you still have emphasis with this puppy right here, which is pretty cool. 
So it's starting to look kind of like the cover of a magazine, I think. It's pretty cool. I'm happy with it. So that is the text tool. Now we go underneath back to the shape tool and uh, you have rectangle. You can do uh, rectangles with rounded corners. You can do ellipses or circles, polygon, but I'm going to click custom shape. And now let's go back to the option bar and you can here, you can see that you have a collection of shapes that you can immediately draw onto the canvas. And if you click this little gear here, you can actually import more. But I think for now we're just going to use this little heart. So I'm going to select that and my fill color, I'm going to make white again. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click and drag. I'm going to hold shift so it's straight. And then I just drew a little heart. So that's really cool. Click the move tool. Let's kind of move it around like that. So that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. Now I'm going to put a little message here. Click in the text tool. I'm going to just type right here and I'm going to say, please. And I'm going to drag this up here, hit command T, make it a little bit smaller and then V. And then I'm using the arrow keys to nudge, just to kind of nudge. And if you hold shift, that'll nudge it even more. But I'm just going to put that right there. Now, what's really cool, I'm going to select this text layer here. So going back up to your options bar with the text layer and you can select this icon here and this will allow you to warp the text, which is really handy. So here I can make it into an arc. There you go. You can see how that looks. I can make it into a lower arc. There you go. He's an upper arc or I can do a bulge, which is kind of like a fish eyes lens. I can do a fish this and then rise and what's really cool is you have these options here so you can decide the intensity and how you want to do this it's kind of cool and handy but I think for now we're just gonna leave it at none but I just want to show you that you can warp your text that way what's really cool is that you can still edit the text so here I'll show you I'm gonna do an arc real quick click OK move tool there's it and then if I want I can still make more edits to it so it's pretty cool but I'm just going to say pet me like that. And I'm actually going to click that, go back to here, hit none. So I don't really care for it. I just kind of like it like that. And I'm just going to place it right there. So let's see, call this heart. And what I'll do is change pet to please. Just move that there. That looks kind of cool. And I'm going to select heart and please, I'm going to hit right here. This is going to put them in a folder and I'm going to put please heart, just so I know those objects are there. Now I'm going to hit the move tool. Now with the move tool right here, you can hit auto select. And what that'll do is whatever you click on, it's going to select that layer really handy and cool. So you can see I clicked on the background, it selected that, I click on the dog's face, it selected that. If I don't select it, then I need to manually select my layer from this point. Also with auto select, you can choose to do group, which is pretty handy. So here we have my group right here and now it's kind of moving everything that's in this folder right here, which is really handy. And then also if I hit command T, I can scale it all, which is really cool. So I'm going to place this right there so it's aligned with the E, kind of give it a cool effect like that. Up here, if I scroll, move the mouse up here, go to the right, you have your opacity. So what this does is this adds transparency to a layer. So what I can do is I can make this really subtle, make it disappear, just kind of have it in the background, kind of like that. It's kind of cool. People can see it, but it doesn't really stand out. So there we go. And this is looking kind of cool. It's like the cover to a magazine or something. Pet me. You got the cute little dog here. And, you know, we still got, I'm going to hide this layer, hide this layer, hide this layer. We still have this little thing here and it's bugging me. We never did get rid of it. Okay. I'm going to show you one more cool trick for this video. So here I am selecting the rectangle tool and I'm going to just kind of mouse over that, go over to edit. Now this is a cool trick. 
I need to have this layer selected. So make sure you have your layer selected that you want to edit. So go to edit, fill right here. Now, instead of filling the color, we're going to put content aware. Now this is Photoshop magic. I don't know how this works, but it just does. And it is awesome. So I'm going to click okay. And there you go. So what that did was it took the surrounding colors and used its calculations to figure out what doesn't belong there. And so anything with the high contrast gets removed. Really, really cool. So that's it before. This is what it looks like now. And it just does a good job because it looks natural. And so now we can go back to showing all our other layers. And that's our image. So pretty cool. So it's a quick introduction to Photoshop. I hope you feel a little bit more familiar with the tools. And in the next video, we'll go further into it. Thank you.